you can do anything on your channel lock. The first is to remove the uh, air intake tube, and then uh, after that, we'll be removing the, the bonnet on the motor. If anybody was wondering, this is a Volant cold air intake. Um, I like it, it sounds good, it opens it up really well. You're gonna remove your uh, mass airflow sensor right there on the bend. Just remove your tube. After you got that taken off, this should just pop right up. Don't judge me, mine's dirty. You can see that connection right there in the back and then you got the red one right here that comes up. This little elbow, that's the sensor. The wire's plugged in over here on the side. That's where we're gonna be changing out. Uh, before you go snatching off the sensor, sorry about the wind, you're gonna be pulling off a K5. You're gonna remove this right here. It's K5, it's ASD on the panel. It uh, has to do with getting the fuel to your uh, system. And you're gonna remove your gas cap and then attempt to crank it up to depressurize the system. And uh, we're gonna try to crank it up a couple times and hopefully it depressurizes. Go ahead and start. All right, that's all I'm gonna do because I got the air intake and everything off. That should work. Again, sorry about the wind, but uh, I forgot to mention too, right before you do start working on it, go ahead and remove your negative terminal and then proceed with the rest of uh, taking the sensor off and the filter and unplugging everything. This is uh, the part here, if you can read everything. Um, I went to uh, my Chrysler dealership, Dodge dealership, and they had it. It was like $88. I think it's like $72 on Amazon, but I got it right now. Pull that out. See that? Like I said, you remove this tab here and then push that down. And this one should come right off. We're gonna wait. I'm gonna get this back one. The back one seems to be held on. Oh, well, it came off anyway. There you go. So then we're gonna go with this uh, sensor here. All right, so once you get them tabs pulled just right, it comes right off. And now, uh, we're gonna work on the back uh, adapter there that holds it on. Fuel pressure or fuel uh, line tool would probably be a little bit easier, but I did not. But uh, see, there's the line there, and you had these indentions. And what I did is I pulled on the line and used the flathead and went around the went around here twisting this, and then applied pressure to the pulling on it, but not too much, but enough. And kept twisting and I got these detents to go in with pressure that held in and I got the line off. So all there is now is to uh, put the new one on and hook it all up and uh, put it all back together. So now uh, to put it all back together, you can take the new one here and just push it in. And you'll hear it snap, a little bit of tug on it and you know it's, uh, it's hooked in. Then uh, get your uh, sensor here. Go ahead and just plug it all back in and then push that tab back in which i did when i just slipped a little bit right there but let me make sure it's on then you have this uh safety latch here that goes on the fuel line push that back on that's holding it down and then you have the new part here put it over that line push it through and then lock it down and sorry about that being out of focus, but you pushed it through, pushed it over, and locked it down. And uh, now I'm going to uh, put the gas cap back on. I put the relay back on, tightened up the terminal over there, and uh, going to crank it up real quick. Hopefully it starts the first time. Put the fuel pump initialized and all that kind of stuff. Should pressurize the system, should. I still have a 
a um, check engine light. I know usually if you unplug the battery and let it sit for um, 30 minutes or so, it usually resets it. But uh, I have a programmer at the house I can hook up and clear fault codes. But I'm just going to see what it does. Uh, it should be correcting itself now, and eventually it'll uh, initialize and re uh, realize the problems out there more and correct it. Um, what mine was doing, it wasn't going to eco mode. Usually up here, it was like uh, initialize or say it's in eco mode. And then um, that's about the only reason I knew it wasn't working is because of the fault code and then also stop going to eco mode. Um, so hopefully that was my problem. And if it didn't, you learned how to change out a fuel pressure sensor on a 2015 up Dodge. But I uh, appreciate y'all watching. A little DIY for y'all, save you some money. I know about the shop, it costs about $300 to get it done. So uh, just that much right there, save you a little bit of money. Appreciate y'all watching. Like and subscribe like always. Have a great day.